Wireless World Forum. I'm here with David Springle from Your Space. Hi, David. How Hi. are you today? Good, thanks. And um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Just let's start with something easy, like tell me a little bit about yourself. What exactly is your position at Your Space? Well, I'm uh, MCTO. In, in the context of an organisation such as YoSpace, it actually means more than just simply somebody who's interested in the underlying technology. I'm also interested in the products that we produce. So I'm, I'm basically there to not just sort of make sure we build the product right, but also to make sure we build the right products as well. Um, well, we're a, first and foremost a software company. Um, we originally we started in 99 um, designing software for mobile mobile operators. Um, sort of since that time we've been, uh, we've developed a, a number of different products. Some things sort of sit in the back, the back office of operators and kind of make things like uh, picture messaging work, so enabling technology. But at the same time we also produced, produce um, sort of end user type propositions such as user generated or mobile blogging. Um, solutions, uh, which we sort of partner now, partner with the operators to sort of take them to market and make them success successful. And your page it says um, users are insatiable consumers of user-generated video content. Do you have any idea why consumer-generated content is so popular, especially for young people? I, th I think that there are that there, there are several ways to look at this. Um, first of all, it's cheap. It's, uh, when it comes to mobile content, you can download 10 clips of user-generated content for maybe a very cheap ringtone or wallpaper. So it's cheap, so it's good value for money. I think there's something slightly more subtle under, uh, un underlying this. Um, there is a, a degree of curiosity we have as human beings. Um, and so it's, it's this concept of being able to actually see what people are doing, sort of, peek, sort of have a brief peek into people's lives and sort of capture a moment they would have hitherto only have shared maybe with their friends. Um, so there, there is this d degree of um, curiosity or voyeurism, I think, that, uh, th that drives interest. And it's probably the same concept that's made reality TV so, um, so popular. So um, you mentioned earlier that you that you um, that the users have to pay for the download. So, but it's only a relatively small amount. I looked at the homepage. Can you actually make profit from that? It's very difficult to unless you've got a full cooperation from the operators. Um, the download that from our platform um, is inclusive of the data charge. So you're downloading, let's say, a 300 kilobyte clip. It's important that when you pay your 10p or 20p to download that clip. Uh, you're not paying for the data in, on top of it because at sort of standard you know, pay-as-you-go operator rates um, that could actually be, the data could actually be a lot more than the actual price to download something. So it's very important the operators you know, believe that the low price point will drive adoption and drive use. And it's from that belief then we negotiate how we're going to split this uh, very small amount of money up. And the the, 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 the key is, it's about volume. This is a, a low margin, high volume game. Use it, that's what user generated content effectively is. Ringtones and wallpapers that have been priced at one pound, one pound fifty, two pounds, you know, are relatively low, low volume. And what we're trying to do is drive you know, this mainstream adoption of, of, of this type of consumption of media. Because uh, mobile products or s s services have been, you know, you know, up till now, relatively high priced, and there's no reason for it to be like that. So, are there, are there any special revenue models that uh, you might think would work especially well for user-generated content for social networking? Well, it's, a, it's <coughs> an interesting area. This, um, in that, at the moment, as I said, our model is based on paper download, uh, and that works because people are used to paying for content on mobile. I'm not sure if they're paying for the content or they're paying for the, the mobility, the, i.e. the ability to download something at the bus stop. You know. um, but it, it, it's, it would be fairly foolish to assume that this kind of mindset of the consumer will last forever. And therefore it's really important that we investigate new types of uh, revenue models for the service. And the most obvious ones would be to replicate what's happening on the web. Which is, um, which is advertising or sponsorship based. But in mobile, it's a little bit more complicated than that because a banner advert on a, 
on, on a web page is something you can click and it opens another window and you're fine, you can go back. You, you, it's easy to navigate to and from uh, an adver advertisement. Whereas on mobile, that call to action is less, less easy. And therefore, it's actually true, not just simply building a model, building a, a, an advertising model, it's actually creating value for the advertiser or the sponsor. Now, there's a number of ways that we can do that, but it's not as straightforward as it may, you know, as slapping a banner, banner advert on the, on the site.